And uh, there may there are prayers for enemies, enemies of uh, spiritism, prayer for a newborn child, for a dying person, for someone who has just died, uh, for suffering souls who ask for prayers. Let's do this one. Also the guardian angels. For a criminal, for a deceased enemy. And the reason why is um, for suicide, for repentant spirits. And the reason why this is here is just a way giving the whole idea how we should talk with this with the spirits. Okay, so I'm going to open with the prayers for oneself, the one's guardian angel and protector spirits. So I invite you to close your eyes if you want to, if you feel comfortable. Breathe easily. Wise and benevolent spirits, messengers of God, whose mission is to assist people and lead them on the pathway of the good. Uphold me during the trials of this life. Give me strength to bear them without complaint. Keep from me evil thoughts and help me not to give access to any other evil spirits who may try to induce me to evil. Enlighten my conscience regarding my faults and lift from my eyes the veil. of pride that prevents me from perceiving them and acknowledging them to myself. You especially, my guardian angel, who watches most particularly over me, and all you protector spirits who have taken an interest in me, enable me to become worthy of your benevolence. You know my needs, may they be fulfilled according to God's will. Sounds very similar to the uh, Lord's Prayer. Okay. All right, right there. So we'll be a cool yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So welcome everybody. Welcome everybody on Facebook. Thank welcome you. Nick Sanchez. Thanks for joining us. Thank um, you. Um, tonight we're talking about. We're continuing our, our reading um, about the conversation with Alan Kardec and the priest. Um, so if, if you number the priest's questions tonight, we're on 13, 14, and 15. Um, so in, in my book, What is Spiritism, I'm on page 136, starting. Um, so um, what did we talk about last week? We talked about a lot of stuff last week. We talked about good stuff. <laughs> yeah. um, a lot of good stuff. So this week, we're starting with the priest's question. Um, the priest says, even if I were to accept your reasoning, don't you think ordinary people need images that are more frightening than a philosophy that they can't understand? So what he's trying to say is that the image of this eternal hellfire and damnation is what's going to keep people, um, you know, to, uh, like, act in a moral way. So... Before we get into what Kardec says, what do you guys think about that? Um, th does the fear of hell make us better people? <laughs> you know, fear and, and these kind of tactics, uh, trying to scare us scare us straight. Um, did it ever work for you guys to motivate you to do good? Have you ever done good? <laughs> Interesting question. Um, fear is a motivator. Fear is a motivator. It is. It's some. It, 
fear, aka ignorance, not knowing uh, the outcome, not knowing your destiny, uh, heaven or hell. Um, I don't know. It's uh, I, I've outgrown that. I, I don't have any fear for aka. You know, I was raised a uh, uh, Catholic, and that's a big. Uh, and they motivate you to do certain dogmas in lieu of that if you don't do exactly what you're told, you're gonna consequences will be you know hell or heaven or so you're kind of you're kind of it, it works kind of on children like the oh yeah but right, once right, you get right, a little teenager, teenager yeah. you know you kind of start to question things a little bit more I mean, yeah most teenagers do I, I, I take a look at some of the things that I'm afraid of you know I'm afraid of it. It's not a very concern to me. I'd be afraid of what's going to happen in the end. I think we're crazy. <laughs> think about, um, I could think of, like, I had a boss a couple years ago that was the kind of boss that liked to scare people. Like, he liked to get you mad so mm. you would work hard and, and do all this stuff. Keep your toes. And I was thinking, like, he's a really old-fashioned kind of boss because these newer kind of bosses, they, they want to motivate people, like, you know, inspire them to work hard, like, because they want to, not to, not to like, uh, have them like being constantly afraid, you know. Right. So I mean, you see that at work a lot of times, where you know you have like one of those angry bosses, you know, versus one of those cool like laid back bosses. But you think about it, like a lot of people will take advantage of the cool laid back mm -hmm. boss, you know. I mean, uh, and, and just it, it it sort of depends on the person. But I mean, I don't know. What do you guys have to say about bosses? I think you can get more motivation out of honey or harmony than fear and ignorance and, 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 and uh, negativity. It seems like. Uh, they both work, but uh, what, 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 which one sustains a little bit more? Kill with kindness, I guess. Mm -hmm. Plus, there's, you know, there's probably, it's easier to talk about the truths to show the truths um, versus the, you know, the evil madness of some imagery um, because it's about joy. It's not about fear, right? So this whole journey is about joy. It's about love. So I don't know you should focus your attention on fear and evil. So I think... You understand it's part of the equation, right? But in my opinion, I think let's uh, stay true uh, you know, to what it is, right? This is about eternal happiness. That's our goal, right? So if our goal is eternal happiness. Let's you know, let's make sure we're we're developing things to keep us in the frame of that uh, frame of mind. That's my my feedback. <clears throat> too, like for me, that um, I was raised Christian, and up to a certain age, like all the things I was taught, like worked for me, and then when I became at the age to sort of question things, the idea of this like eternal hell, just I didn't, I didn't like accept it, and um, so because of like some of the things I was taught that were are obviously like not even true, um, I had, I took that and said like, well, it must all be false. Not, not only is like this part not true, but all like it's all BS. You know? <laughs> so I, I think a lot of people. Um, Alan Kardec says um, religion will always gain by following the progress of ideas. Um, so what he's trying to say is that like people have evolved, and like religion should evolve as the people are evolving instead of, instead of trying to keep them <laughs> back. I felt like you wanted to say something. Yeah, I was thinking on your um, example of the work on the boss. I, I had the kind of boss too. And I think it's an example that may apply here. When um, you may have a boss who has power and he's trying to force you to do things. Uh, or you may have a boss who has authority and, and he is not forcing you but rather you want to do the things because you see uh, that he has a good reason he's right uh, and, and you know he's able to motivate you through that so what I'm thinking is what would be the point of forcing somebody to do good 
what would be the point of forcing of you know that religion so that priest is saying oh maybe people need to be forced to do good but what is the point of forcing somebody to do good I mean what is what what does what good does that add to someone's soul so unless I do good because I have that intention on me um, I don't think it's much good um, anyway Something that popped in my head is the illusion of empowerment, the illusion of disempowerment. Um, I guess you can put that hell would be the, the, the illusion of disempowerment. We're all, basically, we have all the perfection of, of spirit within us. It's just, do we, do we feel like we're empowered? Uh, do we, empowerment means you kind of know your destiny, you know where you're coming from, where you're going. Uh, when you're disempowered, you know not sure what's going to happen. You're, you're afraid of something, of, of the outcome of hell. So it's, uh, I think, you know, hell is disempowering people, maybe giving that illusion of disempowerment. Because life, life is an illusion. It's taught in a lot of practices. And spiritism is like, you know, where things are invisible and what's really truth and what's reality and what's not reality. So it's, it's, um, it's a disconnect, and once you once you get there, it's like uh, it's a scary path because you, you, you're questioning everything. You're questioning what you were taught, questioning dogmas and your teachings. And um, but once once you start realizing the outcome and the you know, what maybe reality is not reality, what you think it was everything it's that we're told to be true. Maybe when you reinterpret it, it's just the opposite of what you think. A lot of times, what you, what you think is just the opposite. Someone tells you something, you think about, what if I did the opposite and I didn't do anything? It would probably be better than doing something that could be not knowing the outcome. I don't know. Cause I, I think, too, like, I can say that I'm guilty of this, is that knowing that, that there's no hell and that, mm. like, knowing that I have the responsibility of the consequences of the choices that I make, sometimes... I use that as an excuse to make poor choices <laughs> that, that, that I just, like, I, I, I can admit that, like, I've done that sometimes, is that I go and do something that I know is, is wrong, but knowing that, like, I'll, I'll deal with the consequences, but also thinking, like, well, I can deal with them, like, in the next life or, or something like that, you know? So, so sometimes I could use a little help to motivate me to... You know. <laughs> I, that my opinion, uh, my isolated and simple opinion, I believe, that's including myself, that uh, uh, we are not at the level of the answering uh, better to, better answering the call of love. The call of fear rings louder. I think in this stage, we still, as we see, as we see the fact of our action in this world, so many people that they wait until they ha they are in a mature uh, age to look for spirituality or transformation. People that become a better person when they find out that they, they are going to die. And all of a sudden they want to do uh, uh, everything in life, they, that what they haven't done. And things that, that were not important for them becomes very important. Listen to someone that is important to you. Feel the rain and those things become very important. So that's what we see. And what it, we it's, see. It's happening because I'm, I was reading The Economist about, you know, America just voted for a populist uh, president. Britain just voted for a populist, you know, Brexit, this idea of Britain leaving the European Union. They call populism the idea of a country like closing its borders, shutting down, becoming xenophobic, and like trying, you know, like, doing all these things like close, like yeah. screw everybody else, you know, this is America, America. <laughs> you know, Britain chose the same thing. Yeah. Uh, I forget, there's another country that chose a populist, like it's becoming popular, yeah. but on, on the flip side, France just voted mm. the opposite, you know, they, they voted for uh, Mark, Marcon, I you say, and he's not a popular, I forget what that, the word that they use for him, but, mm. but yeah, a globalist. Thank you. So and and so they're they're really um, 
excited about what happened in France because they say, I hope this catches on in other countries where we're because he's more about opening up and, and moving forward with, with progression instead of other countries which are, are seen to be sliding backwards. So I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but this is no, like, no, no. I you're feel like what you're, what you're saying is like really happening in the world. You know, That's what we, are, see, what we see, they're, they're exactly. Voting, they're voting with yeah, fear. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Even though there are a lot of people saying, sitters, we still see a lot of action that tells me, I see, that we answer the call of fear more accurately than the call of love. Call of love is like, I don't know, I'm fine, you know. I need to answer the call of love, which is the self-transformation, self-love, self-respect. And in consequence of that, the love and respect of the others and other nations and other people and our fam friends and family. People, they tend to, uh, I'm not generalizing, of course, but we see, still, we see that a lot. And that's why the TV shows, the movies, and now they're trying to connect through the emotion and all the pain. And it's Love being on one, on one end and fear is being on the other. So we're living in fear. I mean, the, 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 the election of Donald Trump, this, this was a reaction to fear. I mean, there's a lot of people in this country that live on fear. Yeah. yeah and I think that's true of all of us. We all have some degree of fear. Yeah. But, the, but fear is, uh, yeah. Well, it's in all the industries, the fear of death, the fear of nature, yeah. the fear of... Absolutely. I mean, all the industries uh, okay. based their income upon that. Yeah. Yeah. Your house is going to burn down. The insurance industry goes on. Yeah. The fear of the future, the fear of homelessness, yeah. 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 the yeah. fear of uh, uh, not being yeah. liked, fear of standing up in front of an audience and making it a fool of People yourself. profit. Uh, and great nice yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's business. I consider that. And we have, yeah. to, be, <laughs> and we have to be really <laughs> mindful in our days because business are using this call of fear to make us buy things, get things that we don't want to, but they are playing with our fears. And we need to be aware of that too. We don't see perfection. When you see perfection, uh, fear goes away. Because everything is perfect. Everything is love. But if everything is perfect, why do I make mistakes? Why do I no, make mistakes? Okay, Yes, as we probably will be coming at to appear I mean, to be a mistake. But why do I want to appear to be a mistake? Well, you're conditioned uh -huh. from society or religion or the industries that this appears to be if you eat a cat or a dog here, that's uh -huh. you're going to go to jail. But how evil. condition can play on perfection? Then it's not perfection. No, you're talking about how does condition play on How a condition, any condition, can play a role on perfection. What kind of perfection is that? There's no that perfection. Like teach. Perfection teach doesn't need any No, no, I'm not uh, saying that doesn't need. Order, what order I'm saying is how conditions, how other things can deviate perfection, can influence perfection. No if I am perfection, no, how can something deviate change me, make play with me, if I am perfection. We can't, so I don't know where this... Nothing it affects you. It's not what it really meant, but... Nothing. But how come, how come I feel affected by things? What, what do you feel that's not perfect? Nature? But if I am perfect, how come you? I feel not... things that are not perfect? Because unfortunately you are conditioned that way. Well, I don't like this perfection. I like a perfection that it's I perfect. Like, I don't like what we... You were conditioned to see what perfection is. No, I like it to be perfect as perfect should be. Perfect. Well, we have to find because perfect is something that perfect is something that has absolutely nothing else to be done but to live in perfection. Well, I don't, if I, I don't agree with you.
No? No. What kind of perfection feels imperfection? Perfection. Is perfect. 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 <laughs> perfection to me is God. And we yeah. live in God. Uh -huh. And his followers are perfect. Uh -huh. okay? And if you are not if you are not living in God, and if you're living in sin, if you will, you're an absence of God, an absence of love. Then I am. Okay. If you're living in an absence of it, you're not perfect. I am an absence of it. Okay, we all are, so that's what we're doing here. But we're that's trying, why I'm saying. We're perfecting ourselves by getting rid of the, uh, the ego, if you will. That is going back to who we really are, which is perfect. We look, I, mean, I like that. Perfect being the light. Perfect. 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 Yes, I mean, this is, you know, we, we, don't, we don't look at perfection. Perfection is around us all the time. We live in perfection. Wow. God is perfection. And we are living it. We are, we're, we're, this is, this is, <laughs> I mean, the, the life is. If I am perfection, how can I be absence of, an absence of God? No, no, no. You, you know, are perfection, but you don't know that you are. You have forgotten that you are. I forgot. You, you know, so perfection for God to be baby, perfect? When that little baby was born, you know, I, I, I just, I just, uh, we just got a new great grandchild, okay? And I look at that baby, and I say, that's, that's, that's God. I don't love that baby. That, that's perfection. And I look at it, and I say, that's who I am. Okay. I am that baby. You know, and, that's, and that's perfect. And, what, and when Jesus said, except you become as little children, you can't experience heaven. Right. Okay. But to get back to that experience of perfection. But we get lost up along the way. Mm. Is that, is that I the congratulate same? you as you both guys, but the I am not perfect. perfect. The I am not perfect. Who you are, Jesus who said, are you? The king, the okay, king, but the you don't know. I am not perfect. But you, you don't, you're not accepting who in no, I know I am not perfect. If I was perfect, there is absolutely nothing to be done. I would be living perfection and feeling perfection 24-7. What, perfect, what, perfect, what is perfection? What is that word? To be, to be like God. It's the act of becoming perfect. If, if you take it apart, you've got perfect. No, no, no. no. Perfection is not the act in becoming perfect. Perfection is already perfect. You, you, no, 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 no. And you then got, I don't like this perfection perfect either. You got perfection. I don't like his perfection and I don't like your perfection yeah. because I like perfection that it's perfect. Uh, well, not is, not undone is, perfection. We have a semantic problem here. Okay? <clears throat> T-I-O-N is a suffix. Right. After perfect. Right. It means the act of. That's what it is. It's the uh -huh. act of becoming perfect. That's perfection. That all lives, all lives are perfection. That is different perfection. That is different than being going, perfect. We're, we're going by getting rid of our ego, we got to be perfect. By getting rid of the, uh, uh, the, the stuff that's attached to our Holy Spirit, you know, and we do. We get rid of it eventually. Find my head. That is more like, like my reason can can grasp to that idea. That is much better. Okay, I'm sorry if I. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm using. Word that's that's much say. better. Because I mean, what, what we're really getting to here, and like we're really not talking about the topic that we're talking about. We seem, to, we seem to do this every week. <laughs> Sorry. But, but um, the spirit is philosophy from from what we the spirits have told us is that when we're created we're created simple and ignorant and that gives us a reason to be here because we're here exactly. as you said to to progress and to get rid of our imperfections and to yes. like work towards purification it sounds it sounds like but original sin this the spirit we're born like the original spiritual sin. philosophy is that we were created perfect and the christian like a lot of christian philosophy yeah. right. really comes that we were created perfect right. and then we sinned and then we yeah. and then we had to like work to you know work back work our way backwards. But the spiritist philosophy is that we're created simple and ignorant. So that really gives us a reason to live when we're here and we know that like we have a goal. We can learn, we can study, we can practice, mm -hmm. you know, and we can work our way forward. And exactly. that really seems more in line logically with what you see in the world. You know, and in my life in my life, you know, I was born a certain way and I've come a long way from where I was born. Because I, I was born and it's not like my parents taught me a lot of these things that I was born with. They they came from 
my past life, you know, I can't really prove it, but it's like I wasn't told like certain things, that, like ideas that I had. I brought them with me from my past experience. And so to be here and to have that opportunity to grow, you know, it, it makes a lot more sense to me than to say like I was perfect and then I was born and then I became. So you know, me too. Angry. Yeah, um, me too. Me too. It just. Uh, but it but thank you for saying this because if we are trying to change our topic and every week going back to this perfection, we're gonna lose the beauty of the new the. Of the teachings that the spirits are bringing to us. Thank you so much. And to remind ourselves here, and those that are listening to us, that uh, Kardec sent out this information to almost 1,000 serious spiritist centers around the world. If this idea was, it was someone that came up with this idea, it would not be possible to receive the same idea for almost 1,000 spiritist centers where Kadek sent out the questions. Almost 1,000, including United States. The serious spiritist center. Why is that? Because that was not something, a philosophy, that was given to one person. and one person had the idea. They didn't know the answer. Kardec was sending out the questions. And that's the reason why uh, Steve and I and Scott, our reason tell us, our reason tell us that this is something. The way that was received this philosophy, it resonates with our reason. It doesn't mean this is the truth, but it, re it means that it resonates with our common sense, with our reason. That's all. That's all. And we need to uh, stop going back to the profession, the profession, and trying to see what, is, what we're talking about every week. And if we're going back to the profession every week, we miss the spot. And we, if we are not against other beliefs. If it's good for other people to believe in that, go for it. It's, it's wonderful. If you are happy with that, it is wonderful. We are not. We are afflicted spirits. <laughs> we want more. We want more. We are spirits that we want to, we came to in this incarnation saying, that's it. I want to learn what is this all. About. I want experience. Faith. Phase 2,100. That's, that's it. I am tired of going back to those things that... <laughs> I can at least admit that I don't know everything. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Daniel? So, no. So, <laughs> you know. Sorry, <laughs> Steve. <laughs> Sorry, but okay, thank you. Let's progress, Steve. Let's Continue progress, your, please, please, please. Okay. We're in your next uh, step. Uh, we get through gee, you were tough tonight. That's all I have to say. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, but... Gee. Let's continue going because that's... Um, going to question 14, the priest says Alan Kardec. Well, would it be so easy and much better if we had a hell and a heaven? You're good, you're going to heaven. If you are bad, you're going to hell. Would it be practical? Not really. No? no? Like well, when you... You don't like it? I like it. When you, when I like passed. it. I choose, my, I choose my side. I like it. Can you go back to... You, can, can you, exactly. church. you get your own hell when you, when you pass. You know, you're going to go through your own hell in your own mind and preparing for your recovery in the spirit world. And you may be there, if you're really bad, you might be there a thousand years. Hey, according to spirit Before you get rescued, you can't get the next steps in the hell with us now.
Uh, I hope we forget. Yeah, well, this is what I'm talking about. So in your mind, when you cross in your over, mind, you're going to be stuck. But you don't need to, to get out of your body to be in hell, as you said. Your spirit. It's you your hell, you feel hell can be right now. Okay. You're yeah. still yourself. You just you, you, you have a different body. This one, yeah. right? So you have a body. It's in the same form, and it's uh, made of other matter, uh, not as dense as this body. Um, but then you're in another place, and you're stuck with yourself. And so now you, you, the first things you find are all these things of the guilt, the things you could have done better, and then you create your own hell. That's easy. Yeah, that's true. So now you're stuck there, trying to recover from yourself, or all the things that, man, I could have done this, I could have done that. So imagine a movie that's in a loop. And if you really did bad, that movie is 500 years long, 1,000 years long. Or you've been removed and, and taken to a prison in the spirit world because you, because there's a little bit more rehe re rehabilitation yeah, that you're going to need to get back into society. I would, I would hope it would. It would so, but. For us, our goals that we're learning is to is to pass without guilt, without resentment, right? So that we can have a, a clearer path when we leave this body, go into the spirit world. Where we're going to learn. We're going to be in classrooms. We're going to study, prepare for another reincarnation someday. So, anyway, so the really hell. in your own mind you create from yourself from your experiences that were so nice that you're still battling. I think as we go on in reincarnations it's I think it's a beautiful system that we get a clean slate again what we recall or what cleans maybe slate of understanding clean slate of experiences and in the back of our mind or the caution or the, the records of, of, of the universe guides us through as we evolve and maybe from this to a bigger type of spirit or being but uh, I like, I just, it just seems like people get, a, a baby has a clean slate, or a plant has a clean slate, or a dog, or an animal. Has, and you can see, it's, it, it, then, then it's indoctrinated, or taught to do certain things, to well, experience. And I was reading in the Gospel, when it says um, uh, that we should be, when Jesus said, like, you should be, become like these children, and a lot of people twist it around to think, like, oh, I should, like, be more ignorant and more, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, I have these ideas. Yeah. And what he was really trying to say, you could help me out with this, because I, I can't really, I just read it, like, recently. Um, that he was, what he was trying to say is, is not not that you should like become children, but you should be more open-minded and just right. like loving. Or have the innocence and, of a child. Yeah, I mean, and we'll never really be innocent, <laughs> you know, if, exactly. we, if we've made mistakes before. Like, not that we have to carry our guilt right. or whatever. I'm just saying, like, um, I can't. I don't know if anyone. But you can. No, you're right. They feel open-minded, and open-hearted, mm -hmm. and like children, they see things with awe. Like, yeah. they are curious. They're more open to. Uh, to learn things, they are more open and more like, as you said, are you going to be uh, pure, uh, in, in innocent, if you are? But you can be in the, in the spirit of curiosity, uh, open-minded, open heart, um, with um, uh, okay. embracing, yeah, non-judgment position and embracing ideas like if you were living for the first time. It is possible. It is possible. In Buddhism, they talk about the beginner's mind, mm -hmm. and that's a really good concept. To yeah. Like, so know, what's the question here? Next question. <laughs> <laughs> the new question. The question is um, oh. free for all. Where is um, the question? Free for all. Dan. I didn't see the sign. Up. <laughs> What's the question? Because um, well, I was going to bring up something. About, bring up. About, then bring it. Because we're talking about heaven and hell. That um, even as I was growing up, I was growing up in the church. I would have questions because I would ask questions like, "Well, what if a child dies? Does it go right to heaven?" And most people would tell you, "Oh, yeah, it does." And you know, and and you know, what if? What about somebody else that dies? Like, do they go to heaven or do they go to hell? And, and I, I kind of, I don't know if I should even say this, but I would ask Christian. You know, I, before I got to the age where I was like, Christianity is just not good. You know, before that, I had a lot of questions. You know, because I was, I was raised in it, and I would be like, well, what about people from other religions, like the, the Jews? You know, like, what, what happens to them? Yeah, <laughs> they're not baptized. They're gonna go to hell. And, you know, I mean, and I'm sure, I'm sure, like every religion, there's the people when they, when they said it was like, oh well, they're gonna find out. You know, 
Oh, <laughs> or like, or whoever. No, sorry. You know. I'm just saying. Scott, is this your friend? <laughs> I'm just saying. Just laid it out there. You know, hey, when you're younger, you don't know stuff. I, 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 I wish they knew what we knew because they're going to be. You know, I remember like you're, a kid. Again, you're ignorant. I don't know how all this stuff works. So all you have is your own bubble at this point. You're a young kid. I, another kid told me like the Jews are going to go to hell. Because they don't believe in Jesus. Like you know, they're not going to. Or if they don't follow the rules, they're going to get against the Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's the same kind of question I ask myself. Same same question. And, Probably and not that, that exact one. Well, yeah, pretty, pretty much the same one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it was, you know, my mind, Muslims, okay, are they going to hell just because... I, mean, I think I had those questions. I did. And it's part of what uh, made me think there's something wrong here. There's something wrong in this picture. I, and I'll be, even say, like, I might not be the right one. I might be the wrong one. Maybe they're right and I'm wrong. Maybe I'm going to hell and they're going to be the ones. Well, on the flip side, uh, these bombers think they're going to have, like, these thousands of virgins in heaven or something like that. And it's the same concept. Yeah, it's a it's a motivational thing. It seems like to, 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 to control you. Right. Just it de just depends if you are uh, solution yeah. oriented or problem oriented. Problem -oriented. Well, it also depends on your elevation because depending <laughs> on your level of uh, evolution, um, we all know we're being influenced frequently, daily, by our discarnated friends, and um, you know what kind of help are you getting? So let's give an example. If you're not a well-evolved spirit, your friends are not well-evolved. And the help you're getting is not really the help. Um, if you're a more elevated spirit, and the friends influencing you and helping you daily, um, there's probably helping you in a good way. So again, all of this is part of the reality that we live in. Um, and it's all for our own benefit, and we can evolve ourselves and get new friends in the disincarnated world. Yeah. And it's our job to repel evil, and it's our job to think and act of our Creator's will, which is that of good and, and the core values and virtues that we've been talking about. Anyway, so I want to digress, but um, yeah, so there's a lot for us to be responsible for, and, uh, and certainly there's a lot to talk about, and we'll let Steve try well, to continue. And you actually kind of touched on like the, what comes next in the conversation with the priest, is that um, Alan Kardec talks about how, like, this is the 1850s or 1860s when, this, when we're having this conversation, and spiritism is kind of becoming um, more, I don't want to maybe not say popular, but it's, you know, it's in the media, it's, and people are talking about it, and the church is trying to say um, the spiritists are getting communications from demons, where the church, and only and probably only the high-level church members get the communications from God. Like, we, we have a monopoly on God, and the spiritists have a, are getting it all from the devil. Even, even the, the, the communications the spirits are receiving that are saying, you know, turn to the good, like, turn to love, all these things they're saying, no, that the devil is trying to trick you into being good. He's trying to pretend to be good just to trick you. And, and that, this is what the... Um, uh uh, and I have read others that were crazy, and, uh, and I, I just disregard it. But um, even my own... Um, Manifestation, my own, the communications I receive when I receive them, I don't take them as good or bad. I usually share with a few people. They are they are good spiritist researchers, and I ask them, "What do you think about that?" So if the spirits, when they come to talk through me, they already know that I am not gonna accept any kind of message or all kind of messages. They already know that I will question, that I will think, that I will read, that I will see. If this is in consistency with all, all that I have read, the spirits that come, they talk through me, they, they know, they do not supposed to talk about me or my hair or my clothes because I'm not going to believe them because I have positioned myself to accept content and they never sign they never sign because I've been educated in the Alan Kardec school and I'm proud of it and they don't sign because I'm not I don't I'm not interested I simply I'm not interested what do you say sign signature who they name who they are Spirit. No, because they know I don't want to know. I what I I'm, I want I want to know what is important for me is the content of the message, not who is talking. 
Some of the, 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 the channeling meetings I would go to, they would have uh, celebrities. I got a question. Yeah, I know. Like, like, like Aristotle, Jesus or... Aristotle. Like, I, I've been to a few. Yeah, Lincoln came it, it seemed time. a little far-fetched. Yeah. 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 Well, yes. Let me ask one of you guys. Kardec himself is, uh, was a medium. No. He was not a medium. No, no, no. When he, when he writes his comments, you know, when he seems to put together what they were saying. But he was a scholar, so he was analyzing. He, he wasn't. He was, a, no, he was using it reason. Wasn't the, uh, um, it, it wasn't his own uh, information that he was getting. Correct. Basically. If you read the introduction of the Spirits book and the Gospel according to Spiritism, he will say in detail that he was using reason. He's just reason like I like me then. Yeah. He was well, the one he, that was told to go. You know, he, he's out on the fact finding yeah. mission. Hey, I got yeah. tell me more about the spirit thing. So he did his study. In fact, yeah. this is the results. So he's, his research. Research. he's listening to the mediums. So he's he's the channel he was getting he was getting messages from mediums and some of the, the mediums, the most important one that he he worked with, they were 14 and 16 years old, and and, and they, he knew the family, he knew who they were. So he knew that they those people did, they were not, that the teenagers he was working with were not in condition to answer those kind of questions. It is like when you haven't seen it, but uh, when you see someone, it is so amazing. Someone that is using, the spirit is using the voice. And I have seen some people where they have little education like uh, formal education and when the spirits is talking through them the vocabulary is, the vocabulary is amazing and you, and you say it can't it can't be this person I know this the person. voice changes as well mannerisms change the content, the content the level, of the, the message major. gives no doubt you know, it cannot be this person. I know this person. I am familiar with this person. It can't be. There's no trick with So, yeah, yeah you can't. You can't fake intellect, can't especially fake. when you go up a few levels. <laughs> but you got to do what's intellect. I mean, we're, we're talking yeah. within this. Uh, well, you know, just crafting sentences, grand yeah, grammatically. Yeah, what's even intelligent? Knows. I think spirits beyond what, what we understand as intelligent as we understand it, of what reality is, of what is right and wrong. Of, I mean, there's a much bigger understanding. Of, yeah. There's a... There, Thank you for saying that because well, if you, we don't have this part, because you don't have the senses of the spirit, do spirits have senses? Do they see? Do they hear? Do they touch? Not the way we do. But so, right. but yeah, what, what, what is the different way? Is there, is there bigger vibrations of these things? Well, they well in order to answer to this question, yeah. I would have to ask you to read the spirit's book so we could be on the same page. But yeah. it's so good that you said that because the, the spirit's world, it's so different for us. It is all the same thing. It's, at the end of the day, it's all the same thing. But because we are now open to listen to them, remember Moses, what, what Moses said. Moses said, from now on, it's in Genesis, go there. From now on, no talking with the spirits. Why did he say that? Why did he say that? Why did he prohibit it? I know the answer. Still was. You, no, you can't say it. You know. Why? Because, because people will, they were using for frivolous situation and questions, they were playing with the spirits. And it was out of control. And people didn't have the education, they were not uh, educated to talk with spirits. So Moses said, from now on, mm, no one will talk with spirits. 
Because it was it created disorder. It created. It was out of control. Yeah. And it's, we need. It's like right us trying to get lottery numbers from a spirit or trying exactly. to ask a spirit. And that's not going to happen. I have friends. They get out their pendulum and they're like, "Okay, what should I have for breakfast?" And the pendulum kind of shows. Oh, them, look. You know, seriously. The pendulum knows everything. You know. Right. I have a couple pendulums and like right. they just. My opinion is all broke, I guess. Because the one they search for water, what do they call it? We are just it's like, like a right. children yeah. trying to yeah. get someone to choose for us. But anyway, if we don't have the heart of the children that looks everything in awe, we, how are we going to listen to the spirits that are saying, hey, we don't see with our eyes like you, you do. We see with the whole spirit, with the whole body. Which is more detail on top of all of that. So. We see much more. We see energy. We see, you don't have to talk. You don't have to think. And we can tell what kind of person you are. And I, I kind of thought about that because I would sort of use the things that the, I would go to the, um, the channelers and I would have ideas like, like I'm going to channel a certain person. I would ask, like, can you bring up this person? And I would be thinking, like, you know, that person would always use, like, a certain word. And sure enough, the channeler would like pull up that word. But I'm like, let's just say this was a frivolous spirit. They can see that thought like out there. <laughs> they can they can pick that yeah. up and they say like, oh, all I have to do is like throw this in like my speech and like right. and I would get like goosebumps. I'm like, oh my god, they said the word, you know? <laughs> yeah, it must be. And it's it's tough because I mean there might be some good communications coming through, but it's like, right? I mean, they they would channel like your cat, or, you know, exactly. cat or your you know, yeah. or Yoda. Exactly. Or we have to keep in mind. You know, we're kind of. I don't want to get out of context because we're talking about communication with spirits. There are orders, levels of different spirits, right? And then we've started to talk about uh, more elevated, and you know that it's pure because of the, the content, right? They don't, they don't have to get credit and say their name here, and they don't talk about your clothes and some of these other things. But there are spirits specifically that are here to mess with you, right? They're jealous of you, they're envious of you, and they're, there's an like order class, it's called boisterous. They just mess with you. Boisterous? The boisterous spirits, right? So really? I, pseudo authority. I don't know this word. Um, it's English translation. I'll have to show you that. Uh, no, so then there's the pseudo authority, which 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 feeds you initially with, "Hey, I'm real," but then it's not. Uh, they're just pretending that they're there. Uh, and so these are things that you learn through spiritism. So if you're if you have mediumistic uh, faculties and sensitivities, then you know these are things you'll learn. Right? You'll learn through the spirit center um, as a medium the things you need to learn to prepare to do mediumship work. Um, and so if you don't have these faculties and sensitivities for mediumship, um, then you know, it's, you don't have to develop these other things. And effectively, there's protection, there's education, um, and it's right. in support of your work. To know, right. like Cynthia was talking about, you know, qualifying and validating a, a, an elevated spirit or somebody just here messing around. Um, because they have nothing else, nowhere else to go, nothing else to do, and they like to play jokes, and they're Emmy and jealous, jealous of us that we're evolving ourselves. And they're, they're jealous that they're not, so they're proud. Keeps down to their level, uh, and that's all real. This all exists. Um, you brought it up, so I think part of the answer to Steve asked is yes. Uh, we here believe uh, education with spirits, or this is how it works. They're actually educating us in a very big yeah. way, and that's what spiritism is all about. And there is no one that can stop that because we we'll keep in the future the spirits they. See. with the spirits, loved ones that live on the other side of the planet. It's going to be a common thing, and it's going to be also, we're just going to sit down, relax, and we'll start the communication. And maybe the person is sleeping, or we are sleeping. So it's going to be a common thing. Right now, we are just trying to learn here. 
Well, maybe you're going to let me throw this out because you're going to hear more.